On December 2, 1941, a fearless German reconnaissance battalion surged towards Kimki, a town merely just 10, 12 miles away from the heart of Moscow, the Kremlin. Their eyes fixated on the looming silhouette of the Kremlin. Their audacious advance marked the closest approach of German forces to Moscow. It was a pivotal moment, as the battalion defied all odds, their footsteps echoing through history. Their relentless pursuit of power and unwavering courage left an indelible mark on that day. How did the Germans get so close to Moscow? What happened in their advance to the Red Square? Let's discuss this. Oh, by the way, we are history at war. We are very happy to have you here. Anyway, let's continue. It's the autumn of 1941. The German war machine marched on with the Blitzkrieg still in full effect. The German army, under the command of Field Marshal Fedor von Bock, is closing in on Moscow, the heart of the Soviet Union. To achieve their objective, the Germans initiate a multi-pronged attack, with Army Group Center leading the charge. Now let's delve deeper into the units and commanders who played pivotal roles in this monumental battle. Army Group Center, comprised of various German army formations, formed the backbone of the German advance toward Moscow. Among these units was the 2nd Panzer Group, led by General Heinz Guderian. Known for his innovative armored warfare tactics, Guderian's group spearheaded the offensive and rapidly advanced through Soviet territory, capturing vital strategic points along the way. Additionally, the 4th Army, commanded by Field Marshal Gunther von Kluge, played a crucial role in Army Group Center's offensive operations. The 4th Army consisted of well-trained infantry divisions supported by artillery and motorized units. Their objective was to provide infantry support and maintain the momentum of the German advance. Field Marshal Fedor von Bock, the overall commander of the Army Group Center, was a seasoned military leader known for his strategic acumen and operational expertise. He had previously distinguished himself in the campaigns against Poland and France, and his leadership skills were crucial in coordinating the diverse German units for the assault on Moscow. Leading the 2nd Panzer Group was General Heinz Guderian, a visionary commander and advocate of mechanized warfare. Guderian's bold tactics, including the innovative use of combined arms and mobile armored units, played a significant role in the early successes of the German advance toward Moscow. On the Soviet side of this battle, Marshal Georgi Zhukov emerged as a towering figure, a brilliant strategist and seasoned commander, entrusted with the pivotal task of defending Moscow. As the overall commander of the newly formed Western Front, Zhukov stood at the forefront of the Soviet resistance efforts, leading the charge against the relentless advance of the German forces. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Zhukov unleashed his strategic genius, skillfully deploying a formidable array of forces to construct an impenetrable defensive line encircling Moscow. Infantry divisions, bolstered by the might of tank divisions and supported by a formidable array of artillery units, stood as an unyielding barrier against the German onslaught. Zhukov's meticulous planning and attention to detail were evident in every aspect of the defensive preparations. His keen understanding of the terrain, combined with his ability to exploit the strengths of his troops, proved to be a formidable combination. He masterfully positioned his forces, taking advantage of natural obstacles and fortifications, creating a series of defensive strongholds that would test the mettle of the German invaders. The city of Tula, located approximately 100 miles south of Moscow, became a significant obstacle for the German forces. Tula was a crucial industrial and defensive hub, and its defense was organized by General Ivan Panfilov. The Soviet defenders put up a stubborn resistance, utilizing the city's factories and buildings to create strong points. The battle raged for several weeks, with the Soviet forces successfully repelling German assaults. However, Tula eventually fell to the Germans due to their overwhelming numerical superiority and relentless attacks then. It was a clear heading to Moscow. The German offensive towards Moscow, codenamed Operation Typhoon, commenced in October 1941. The German forces, primarily led by Army Group Center under the command of Field Marshal Fedor von Bock, launched a swift and audacious campaign to capture the Soviet capital. Exploiting perceived weaknesses in the Soviet defensive lines, the German forces advanced rapidly toward Moscow. The German forces, supported by panzer divisions and air superiority, achieved several breakthroughs in the early stages of Operation Typhoon. They exploited gaps and disarray in the Soviet defenses, encircling and capturing large Soviet formations. 
The encirclement battles, such as the Battle of Vyazma and the Battle of Bryansk, resulted in significant Soviet losses and paved the way for the German advance toward Moscow. As the German forces closed in on Moscow, the Soviet high command, realizing the imminent threat to the capital, made significant efforts to strengthen the defensive lines. They deployed reserves, established fortified positions, and organized a formidable defense along the key approaches to Moscow. The Soviet defenders, under the leadership of General Georgi Zhukov, were determined to protect their capital and launched counterattacks to disrupt the German advance. As German forces approached Moscow, they faced fierce Soviet resistance in urban areas like Kalinin, modern-day Tver. The Soviets utilized buildings, barricades, and defensive positions to halt German progress. Navigating the densely built-up areas proved challenging for the Germans, resulting in heavy casualties. The Soviets employed tactics such as ambushes, stronghold creation, and strategic booby traps to hinder the German advance. The urban environment posed significant obstacles for the German troops. Narrow streets and alleys limited mobility and diminished the effectiveness of their superior firepower. Conversely, the Soviets, familiar with the terrain, launched surprise attacks from concealed positions, making it difficult for the Germans to establish a secure foothold. The fighting in Kalinin and other urban areas near Moscow involved intense close-quarters combat. House-to-house -house fighting and hand-to-hand -hand combat were common, with buildings turned into fortified strongholds contested fiercely. This style of warfare caused high casualties and extensive damage to urban infrastructure. Despite encountering fierce resistance and suffering heavy losses, the German forces made some progress in the urban areas surrounding Moscow. However, the urban fighting significantly slowed their advance and depleted their resources. The determined Soviet defenders continued to resist fiercely, prompting the German forces to reassess their strategies and tactics. The German offensive towards Moscow coincided with the onset of the harsh Russian winter, further complicating the already challenging situation. Freezing temperatures, heavy snowfall and limited supplies posed immense challenges for the German troops on multiple fronts. The extreme weather conditions had a significant impact on the mobility of the German forces. The snow-covered terrain made it difficult for vehicles to traverse, impeding their progress and rendering many roads impassable. Tanks and trucks struggled to navigate through the deep snow, leading to mechanical failures and delays. The frozen ground also made it harder to dig trenches and fortify positions, limiting the Germans' ability to establish defensive lines. The freezing temperatures took a toll on the soldiers as well. Frostbite and hypothermia became prevalent issues, especially for those ill-prepared for the severe winter conditions. The soldiers had to contend with numbing cold, icy winds and sub-zero temperatures, which not only affected their physical well-being but also decreased their morale and combat effectiveness. The German soldiers were not equipped with winter attire. This severely affected them. The adverse winter weather also disrupted the German supply lines. The frozen ground made it challenging to transport essential provisions, including food, fuel, and ammunition. The logistical difficulties were compounded by the vast distances and the logistical strain of sustaining a large-scale offensive deep into Russian territory. The German forces faced shortages of critical supplies, exacerbating the challenges they already encountered on the battlefield. The Soviets capitalized on this by employing winter warfare tactics. They conducted hit-and-run ambushes, launched surprise attacks, and exploited the difficult winter conditions to disrupt German operations and cause logistical problems. The Soviet High Command implemented effective command and control systems. They coordinated the efforts of different fronts, ensured rapid communication, and facilitated the timely deployment of reserves. This streamlined coordination played a crucial role in repelling the German offensive, Ultimately, the winter was a massive help for the Soviets, and this allowed the Soviets to push the entire German force back and destroying the complete operation of Typhoon. The Germans simply could not make any significant progress with the harsh weather conditions and extremely bad supply line problems. Operation Typhoon resulted in significant losses for the German forces. The casualties suffered, coupled with the strain on their equipment and supplies, weakened their military capabilities. The failed offensive drained German resources and reduced their ability to sustain large-scale operations. The failed operation shifted the strategic initiative from the Germans to the Soviets. 
It demonstrated that the Soviet Union was capable of withstanding the German onslaught and launching successful counteroffensives. The Soviet victory at Moscow boosted their morale and signaled a shift in momentum on the Eastern Front. The successful defense of Moscow and the subsequent Soviet counteroffensives boosted Soviet morale and confidence. The victory at Moscow served as a turning point, inspiring the Soviet people and military to continue their resistance against the German forces. This battle was the first of many defeats for the Germans, and was officially the end of the Blitzkrieg war machine. And that concludes our journey into the historic Battle of Moscow. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into one of the most important moments of World War II. Remember to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. Thank you for joining us at History at War, where we bring the past to life. Don't forget to leave a comment down below with your thoughts, suggestions, or any other battles you'd like us to cover. We will see you guys soon.